Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, Oh, my soul, my soul, I am pain in my very heart. My heart makes a noise in me. I cannot hold my peace because you have heard, O oh my soul, the sound of the trumpet and the alarm of war. Now, in the past few scriptures, we've been talking about how Jeremiah told Judah, the son of part of Israel, and the king that was in charge. So he's seen the great glory of, of King Josiah that was a godly man. He brought a re spiritual revival within the land. But then he died and the, the country went back to paganism. And before this even happened, during the time of King Josiah, as he seen the tide get to turn, and actually he was young, God seen the tide turning. He comes young and said, hey, there's some stuff get ready to come down here. He's probably a teenager. And I am going to send Babylon to come to Israel and Judah, and I'm going to take the land. And I want you to get a word and tell them. And just like you see this, this, this tree's root that's happening, and it grows, this is a sign that my prophecy is going to come true. And it did come true. Babylon did come and take the land. And he's here warning them. You see what they did in Israel in the previous chapter? You see what they did in Israel? It's going to happen to you. Why aren't you take, waking up and understanding that these things happen because they turned away from God? Israel turned away from God. Look what happened to here. Now you're doing the same thing Israel did by worshiping our idols, mistreating your people, letting corruption be in the government and within this people, living wicked lives, and now you bring in judgment because you've broken the covenant that you had with God and the Pentateuch. So this is what he's talking about. And those who know what the Pentateuch is, talking about Matthew, I mean, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and the first five books in the Bible that has the law in there, okay? And shows the relationship between God and Israel and how he took them out of Exodus and brought them to the promised land and now they're a nation. And there was a promise that was made between them and God to be a nation. But he's saying, I don't want, I love my country. I'm a patriot. How many of you are a patriot? I grew up as a patriot. I grew up in a military base. I was, I'm a patriot. I love my country. I love America. What country are you a part of? Are you a patriot? Do you love your country? Now, there's some people that might not feel that way or might be embarrassed with the system they are, they're in right now. Maybe they, they don't feel the way I do about the country, but good or bad, I'm a true red-blooded American. And I think I already mentioned I grew up on Air Force bases since I was a kid. When the flag goes up, I get excited. I get hurt when I see ripped flags flying around our neighborhood, especially when I use it for the wrong purpose. And when I go to school as a substitute teacher, if those kids don't stand up and put their hand over the heart, man, I'm all over them. I go, how dare you not stand up and pledge allegiance? I don't care if you're not a citizen. I tell them straight out, I don't care where you're from, you're in America now. I don't say it's quite that blunt, but basically you're in America now, no matter where you're from, and this is the best country in the world as far as I'm concerned. We have all more freedoms than a lot of other countries that you need to stand up and put your hand on heart. And if you don't really care too much with the government system, you got guys going out over Afghanistan. Well, we're not in Afghanistan anymore, but at times Afghanistan, Iraq. We still have soldiers in other parts of the country. And their lives are being sacrificed. And people still get uh, die and stuff and are injured making sacrifices and they fight uh, overseas so that we don't have to fight here and now we're providing weapons overseas so we have to have those weapons come over here have you guys ever thought about that but so I, i'm just like a a really gut home man when it comes to our country i love america whatever country you're from i'm sure you feel the same way about your country i'm sure you have some national pride okay but that's Jeremiah here. He doesn't want to see his country go down. He doesn't want to see his country be taken over by Babylon. He said the only way it will stop is if you turn back to God. If you refuse to turn back to God, the destruction is going to come. And he's just uh, in, in pain. He's in sorrow because he knows what's going to happen. But the people aren't listening. Have you ever seen something in your life? They 
they, they, they got in drugs, or they got involved in alcoholism, or they got a gambling habit, habit, or they got with a bad boyfriend or girlfriend, and you see what's going to happen, but you can't do anything about it because they won't listen? Have you ever been in that situation? Have you ever had that burden? Have you ever uh, had a child you're trying to train them right, but they just wouldn't listen? And you knew they're headed for trouble. You did everything you could, but they just wouldn't listen. Have you ever been in that situation? Well, this is what Jeremiah's situation is right here. So let's keep on reading. Destruction upon destruction is cried, for the whole land is plundered, and my curtains in a, mo in a moment. So basically, he said the, the last call is coming. And just like in the theater, when the curtain closes, you're, the curtain's closing on you soon. How long will I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my and, 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 and hear the sound of the trumpet, for my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children. They have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but do good they have no knowledge. Have you seen people that just refuse to do what's good? Have you been in that situation yourself? Have you looked at people and said they think they're doing right? They think they got all that. They got their house. They have their cars. They have their jobs. Some are living a life of luxury. Or maybe you're one of those two. Or, you know, or, or you, don't, you don't have to be that, 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 that case. You just got everything you need. Life is good. I got my friends. I got my family. So I, I really don't need God. I don't need to be going to church every week. I'll go to church once a week, but I don't need to be reading my Bible and praying every day. Uh, I'll, I'll do my Sunday thing. I'm going to live my life the way I want to the rest of the week. And I'll go to church this week, and then later, yeah, I still dabble a little bit with the horoscope and the Ouija board and all that stuff. And God said, no, you can't be doing that stuff. You can't be dabbling with the Ouija board and the horoscope and doing the crystal power and all that stuff. That's worshiping other gods. That, that crystal can't help you. That Ouija board is just full of demons that I that really were fallen angels from me. And they're working against me, and they're going to send you to hell when I'm trying to get you to heaven. And then all these other things, philosophy and stuff, it's good to have philosophy and have good reason and stuff, but if you rely on that alone, it's going to mess you up. Mindfulness? Mindfulness is okay when you're doing your breathing, to control your breathing. Well, I, I didn't know it's called mindfulness. I learned that when I was in, in high school. They meant to put their hands up, pee, to breathe, and bring it down. And that helped control my breathing because I had asthma. And then later I read a book called The Art of Loving, and I learned how to uh, clear my mind and have clear thought and have more focused conversation and things like that. Nothing wrong with that except for when you clear your thoughts so bad, you just let any random thought come in your mind. Then you're leaving yourself to demonic suggestion. And also you leave yourself open for your own self-deception where you you think you're not hearing from God, you're hearing from yourself. And unfortunately, we have some Christians that claim that's the case. They get some idea. But the idea didn't come from God, it came from themselves because they were doing a, a form of mindfulness meditation, uh, you know, which I've had to warn some people about in the past. You know, when you read your Bible, you pray, you, you do tell them, take some time to listen from God. When you hear that word, you got to test the spirit. Is that coming from you or is that coming from God? Is that coming from your motivation or is that coming from God? Because you do it by your motivation, you're going to go the wrong path. You're going to be messed up. There's times where I prayed. And even before I had time to sit quiet, I heard God say, no, 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 don't do that. And you know what? Unfortunately, because sometimes I thought I was just crazy or not, or just, just, uh, just, uh, you know, what? That, that can't be the case. I didn't listen. I regretted it. So you got to know God's voice. You got to hear God's voice. And when you hear it, you have to listen. Because because there's a couple times I didn't do it, I made some terrible mistakes. So you got to know God's voice. We got to make sure it's God's voice. That is, anything that goes against the scripture is not God's voice. God's not going to tell you to go get a divorce. God's not going to tell you it's okay to go sleep with this woman. And it's not your wife or you're not married. Or you're going to leave your wife to go with some better looking wife. Or you're going to do some unsavory things to go get a job. God's not involved in all that stuff. 
the devil, the devil has deceptive ways to do things because he said he looks like an angel of light. He can turn you the wrong way. The evil is not good. Some people are so wrapped up in doing evil that they can't tell what's good. And even now, now we're in a postmodern age where we go, this is your truth and this is my truth and there's no absolute truth. But I'm sorry, people. There is an absolute truth. And the absolute truth starts here. Why? Why? Why does it start here? Because this comes from God. So anything that contradicts this is not the truth. And what's going to happen is you're going to you're going to find yourself going the wrong way, making the wrong decisions, and you're going to feel empty in your life because you didn't do it the godly way. You might make it, but you, you'll feel empty. You won't have the full satisfaction you had if you did it God's way. You won't be able to enjoy it as much as if you did it God's way. And then those that fall and stumble and mess up their lives is also because they didn't do it God's way. You have to follow the word of God before you have to follow his word. And also, there's a bigger burden. How many of your friends do you know that do not know Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior? The destruction and the trumpet and the alarm that we're trying to give out now is that one day you're going to meet your maker. Would it be today when you die? Or would it be later when Jesus Christ comes back on earth? If you live long enough time to see that happen. One day you're going to meet your maker. Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? The only way you could go to heaven if you had Jesus Christ inside your heart. And that's the warning we're giving out today. And the question is, do you have a burden for your friends and family to know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior? Well, you might be a little bit introvert like me. And I sometimes have a hard time talking to people. Well, what you do, have you at least tried to invite them to come to church? Have you maybe thought about maybe buying them a booklet to give to them? To, like we give out tracts out in the, in, in the neighborhood and then let them talk about that and and then start the conversation where you can witness to them. You know, maybe have you shared the testimony how you became a Christian? Have you told them about what God's done for you? And then let them ask the questions that later it turns to a situation where you could lead people to Christ. Because, you know, we're not being um, Bible bangers out there on 7th Street. We asked them if you need prayer. And now because I felt we needed to be witnessing more, because I wasn't quite sure the way to do it. I still need some more training on that probably. But I asked, you know, uh, do you know Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior? Because I do know how to share my faith. Okay, you guys know I did some training on that. So I just said, we're just going to start asking, do you know Jesus? You know, I just we just don't want to be like in your face uh, rude to people. But I did ask, do you know Jesus? They say yes or no. I asked, have you seen Jesus Christ in life? They're going to say yes or no. Most told me yes. I'm not sure they're just saying that to get me out of face or not, but most do tell me yes. Or they ha- they said in their mind, but maybe not in the heart. But it's not for me to judge that. Okay, but again, sometimes we say no. And we ask, well, would you like to know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, and give them an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior? But do you have a burden that for your friends and your family? The part of the reason why we kept doing this on the internet, because I have a whole bunch of family that needs to hear the gospel. So the way I get to reach them where they need to be encouraged to follow God better, you know, or they need just encouragement themselves. So I do so also so my family and my, my sons and daughters, because if they ever click on, can see their dad or hear their uncle talk. And maybe later on, if, after the things are gone, they might click on and go, oh, that's what my uncle was talking about. Oh, that's what my dad was talking about. Oh, and then the word touches them and they draw close to Christ. They return back. They get saved. Or maybe somebody else out there. Because of that burden that's here. You see, people know Jesus Christ. You know they're going to go to heaven, number one. And then number two, I know some people don't like hearing about this today. It's not about just what, you know, we, we know we live our lives to glorify God. And that we're created for His glory. But God also is concerned about our personal lives. He wants to help us out today. And I want people to see how God can help you out today, even in your personal life. Because heaven's going to be there, but God wants to help us here and be to, to help improve our lives and improve other people's lives around us. He says, I come that you might have life, that you might have abundantly. That means He wants your life to be blessed, to be enhanced. Does that mean some people get rich? Maybe. Does that mean some people will get promotions? Maybe. But maybe it means you get a different perspective. 
things that weren't important are now important. Things that you thought were important aren't so important. So now you're not so stressed out. You're not so angst. And now you have peace and joy in your heart. And not happiness that's built on situation, but joy that is based on your relationship with God. And that commitment and satisfaction. You don't, you're not saying that song anymore from Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Because you had Jesus inside you. Do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior? If you don't, I want to invite you to receive him today. I want you to go to, let me put this up here, greatcommissionevangelistministry.org. On there, click on how to get to heaven, and we have everything to help you learn how to become a Christian. And then also, you can pray the prayer in there. And then also, we have a video on what you do after you become a Christian. Once you've done that, we have some more videos on there about beginning steps to Christian. So you click on more for the beginning steps. But first, you may have Jesus Christ inside your heart. And I need a chance to invite him in today. We have some other interesting things on that, that website as well. So if you're ready to receive Jesus Christ in your heart, say these words. Lord Jesus, I need you. I believe that you died across my sins. I believe that you rose again from the dead. Please come to my heart and save me and take control of my life. And today, I commit my life to you. If you say those words and mean it, and you're ready to commit yourself to Christ, He will come and save you. And that means the Holy Spirit is in you, and you're going to heaven. If you are a Christian, but you say, I just find yourself in a wayward part, make a commitment to start following Him. Make a commitment to start following Jesus. And ask for forgiveness. And start following Him. Start reading the Bible. Start praying. Start going back to church. Get yourself involved in ministry. Start sharing with your friends and family about Jesus. Walk the talk. Don't just read, but put the words of God in action in life. And as you do that, God will move in you and you'll experience the peace and joy that he wants you to have in your life as a Christian.